It's an umbrella and lawn chair kind of day here in Williamson County. I'll zoom out and show you. It's an incredibly remote area of Walburn. Right, getting ready for ACL. Temperatures hot and muggy out there. 83 degrees and you know a lot of changes here in the future cast. So I want you to listen up to this. When we see that heavy rainfall, it's at least three inches above my heel line. But a very peaceful protest. But right now things are just starting to change pace here. You can see several protesters have just managed to overtake uh, I-35 oh once again. This could actually do one or two things. These heavy downpours could exhaust our atmosphere this evening and kind of bring us in the clear. 15 homes threatened, 24 families evacuated. During the 2018 flood, it rose to over 400 for more than a week. Quick transitions is key here, but Dr. Janolini says if you do put your hand in the candy bowl, then service transmission is extremely rare. 14 near Yakima, but here's that light at the end of the tunnel when temperatures start to warm up, warm air trapping that cold air and creating that low level fog that we're seeing in the Tri Cities throughout those overnight and early morning hours. I've been following several accidents and like you just mentioned, that latest happening here and Round Rock. Yeah, both Round Rock's school board president and superintendent were present during the hearing and actually called as witnesses trying to get them to be solution oriented and in candy scott's fourth grade class students just completed their passion projects combining oh. something they love and something that bothers them students ran the gamut of subjects one of them uh, engineered a vending machine for homeless dogs others poured their passions into current events like researching the covid 19 vaccine or exploring the foster care system. And I kept asking her almost every other day, you know, can I help you with the project? Because I, I did want to know what it was about, what where she was going with it. Sue Ellen's daughter, Chloe, narrowed in on the word hate. To actually read what she's writing, what she's feeling deep inside, it is, it's heartbreaking. This is Chloe's passion project. You don't know my dad, so why do you hate him? He's funny and loving. He teaches me to be respectful to everyone and never to see color. I love spending time with him, but lately he seems like something's wrong. He's quiet and always thinking. He's not as happy as before, and it makes us sad, too. He leaves every night to protect you, even though you hate him. Chloe's dad is a local police officer. He teaches his children that an us-versus-them mentality doesn't stand in their home. We don't pick one side just because we're on this side. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Because a couple of police officers made mistakes, they think that every police officer is the same way. When um, Chloe shared her project, um, one of the students asked where it came from, why she wanted to do that. Miss Scott welcomes open discussion in her fourth grade class. It's hard. It's really hard. It's delicate. You worry a little bit that you're putting ideas into their heads sometimes, um, but I'm, I think they are putting ideas into each other's heads more than anything, but it's real and it's we don't want to um, shut it down. We want to have real conversations. And that's exactly what this YWCA child counselor recommends. With children, it's, it's, it's sometimes asking them questions rather than telling them. So what do you think that, that people are afraid of? What might they be afraid of? Having an open discussion with your children, allowing them the space to think critically about the issues heading home. Caitlin Carmo, KXCN News. According to the arrest affidavit, the investigators say they found eight shell casings outside of these three bars. They also believe those shell casings came from the same gun. They also say this is where White was standing as he fired those shots into the street. Oh. In video taken by six street visitors at the time, we clearly heard at least six oh. shots sending the crowd running for their lives. Yeah, boom, 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 right. So when you hear that, that's just somebody that's just, just someone randomly just firing. That's all it is. Like I said, there's nothing special. Michael about Cargill this is a Central Texas gun activist. We called him because he, he owns a gun shop in town and understands the capacity of these kinds of firearms. You got a group of people not trained, don't know anything about guns um, and randomly just firing 
you know, uh, with no no purpose in life. He showed me the type of gun police believe DeAndre White used, a 9mm handgun. I also asked Cargo how White could have done so much harm as the sole shooter. And this thing here can hold 15 rounds you know, and one round in the chamber, so you're looking at 16 bullets. And if you're looking at a full metal jacket, that particular bullet there can actually go through a person, hit another person. The arrest documents also indicate police believe the target was another group of teens from Colleen. While White is being held without bail, family of the man shot and killed aren't convinced the others involved should be able to walk that easily. That's not Austin. That's not the Austin I know. That's not the Austin we love. Caitlin Carmo, KXAN News. Come here, Rave. The grass is thick and tall on Craig Daniels Boy, Ranch. They're all dogs, you know, until you try to put them in the pen. He's been raising cattle here in Briggs for decades. I'm on my third drought and my second ice storm. <laughs> His third severe drought hit in 2011. Oh, the dry and brittle conditions caused $7 billion in crop and livestock damage. We would be better if we had some more information coming our way. Uh, that way you could prepare. You might be able to buy a little more feed or stock up on stuff because, hey, when that last drought hit, started out at about $50 a bale and ended up to nearly 200 in some places. This last one is showing the U.S. drought monitor. At the University of Texas, Zhong Ling is trying to go beyond the so U.S. The drought problem. monitor standard. With the tools we have, we see things different from the traditional method. UT used soil moisture data gathered from gravity and microwave sensors on satellites to measure the 2011 drought. The UT model on top here showed the drought was far more severe and longer lasting than the U.S. drought monitors model below. So the researchers are pushing to make UT's model the standard across the nation. Anything that would give us a little bit of a heads up. Because Craig Daniel knows there's a lot you can't control. No matter if you do everything right in your life out here. Mother Nature always has the final say. Caitlin Carmoat, KXCN News. We don't exist till so here's what you got to look out for. Bring that rain jacket both Friday and Saturday. Sunday, we're clearing out, so nice and sunny Sunday with temperatures in the upper 80s. So cooling us off just a little bit from our high temperature today. How much rain are we going to get? Anywhere from one to three inches. But some of our high definition models is showing parts of our region at Lampasas as well as San Marcos could see four to six inches of rain. So that's why we're seeing this possible flash flood threat. Level two here, so we'll keep an eye on out for that as kind of our soil becomes saturated this evening and uh, causing some of that runoff. Plenty of sunshine for race day. Tonight, 71 degrees. Again, heavy downpours there. Tomorrow will cool off just a little bit. 86 degrees is our daytime high. And that seven day forecast here, bigger picture. Friday, Saturday chances, Sunday morning early, 20% chance of rain there. We clear out for the beginning of your work week with temperatures in the low 90s.